Welcome back everyone. I'm Carrie Collins and this is our final week, week 24 of Life Renovations. I want to thank all of you for being part of this amazing journey with me. I don't think I could have pushed through six months of this without knowing that you guys would be on the other end of the line listening to every single lecture. It's been an amazing experience watching all of you go through changes and accomplishing goals, but it's also been such a journey for me to see the changes in myself. One thing's certain, we are constantly in a cycle of growth and the learning never stops. When you signed up for this course, I promised to lead you towards discovering your purpose and creating a happy and healthy life. You should be realizing now that the only way to get there is through your own mind, and that's a lifelong process. So today we're gonna to talk about how to keep on track now that the course is over. We started this course with six lessons on learning about how to perceive the signs you're receiving from the universe. We increased your awareness you learn to listen to your subconscious. You learn to tune into the signals of your solar plexus. You learn to listen to the spiritual eye that's underneath it all. You learned how to change your thoughts through affirmations and how to build a mental house that has a solid foundation. Now, all of these tools led you to the law of being, which states that our purpose can manifest itself as long as it's creative and constructive. But what is being? Well, it's living. When you are living without fear, limitations, or anxiety, and in a way that helps others and society, you are living your truth. You're living the life that only you are able to live. The next six weeks, we fine tune your ability to use your mind and nourish the life that you're living. You learn to visualize in order to materialize what you want. You learned how to overcome fears and come into your power through changing your thought process. You learned that you are Truly, whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy, and you were able to believe it. You learned that to trust that the universe will provide for you and what abundance really is. You learned to use inductive reasoning to see that there are many factors involved in every single success. And all of this led to the law of love, which states that feelings give vitality to thoughts. Feeling is desire and desire is love. Thoughts combined with love are invincible. So you learned how to bring life to your thoughts and how to bring them into fruition. The law of love is all about abundance, about nourishing yourself and your thoughts with the fuel that they need to grow. The third quarter, you learned how to care for those growing thoughts. You learned how to practice, how to have harmony, how to establish a healthy environment for growth, how to demand the highest quality of life for yourself and how to trust your intuition. Once you master these tools, you are ready to present yourself and your true purpose to the world. Expressing your true self to the world is the ultimate creation. When you were expressing your greatness, you were allowing your ideas to mingle with others' ideas to create even more ideas. By being true to yourself, your ideas were able to multiply. Now, the past six weeks, we've been focusing on the spiritual nature of your being. We learned how to use energy to our benefit. You learned what it means to be inspired. You learned how important it is to dream big, how to take care of your health, and how to really live your life's purpose 100%. Now, this all leads us to this final lesson. It's about finding your truth and starting over. The truth is about knowing what's real and factual. We know that not everything we perceive is true. For instance, the sun actually does not move across the sky, but we move around the sun. Now, it's hard to perceive that because we feel like we're standing still. When Copernicus suggested that the earth actually was moving around the sun, the church arrested him. He didn't publish most of his ideas until right before he died, and many of his followers were placed under house arrest. Giordano Bruno, who proposed that the sun was actually a star and that there were lots of other stars in the universe, he, that guy was burned at the stake. Now their theories seem so heretical then, but now that it's been proven by science, we don't even question the fact that the sun is a star and that we move around it. Our perception tells us, though, that the sun is moving across the sky, and every child needs to learn that that's not actually the case. Truth comes from knowledge of facts. It doesn't really come from our perception. Now, on a smaller scale, your life is full of the same kinds of fallacies. It's very rare that we actually look at the facts that surround a problem. You know from what I've taught you in this course that illness and unhappiness are both simply the result of negative thoughts. Both illness and unhappiness sit on negative ends of the spectrum. If you want to climb the ladder towards health and happiness, you have to change your thoughts. But they're only effective in the extent that they are true. 
Your real work for the rest of your life is to convince yourself of the truth in your own thoughts. Truth is one of the most vital principles, and once you truly believe yourself, you will find yourself moving higher on the spectrum of health and happiness. Now, in my years as a Kihara trainer and as a teacher, I've learned a lot about the human condition. I've learned that most problems with health and the body can be removed as soon as the true cause of the problem is found. Our bodies have a way of hiding our problems from us, making it easy to assume that we're really okay. And many of my clients come to me with injuries and are shocked to find out that all too often the actual spot of the damage is not where they thought it was after all. For instance, pain in your IT band and your outer thigh is often caused by a dysfunction in the hip flexors. Upper back pain is often caused by tightness in the chest. Now these are easy fixes for me, but in more complicated cases, it's not so easy. Like I had a client who was suffering from a pinched nerve in his neck. And the doctors told him his only option was surgery to have the vertebrae fused. And to do this, they'd go through the front of his neck and there was a slight risk of damage to his voice box. And his career depended on the use of his voice. So the surgery was really risky. And I agreed to work with him to fix the problem. Well, he thought I was just stretching him. I mean, we're just stretching muscles. Um, I was actually intensely searching for the truth of the injury. Now, I learned that the pain had a tendency to come back in the early summer almost every year. And he'd find ways to curb the pain through therapy or through drugs or whatever. And it would go away, but it would just keep returning every summer. After days of working with him, there was one stretch where he said out loud, whoa, that stretch is like World War II. And I was all like, excuse me? He seemed to think that World War II was a perfectly fine description of how his arm felt when I stretched him. And I was all like, can you expand on that? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. And he said, you know what those guys went through. Like that was intense. Like, oh, <laughs> in the discussion that followed, I learned that he had been studying the Normandy invasion when he had a severe accident that broke his arm in three places. Somehow he associated that trauma with the events of World War II and every Memorial Day triggered a protection response against the events of the accident. Once I removed the tension from that specific muscle that was holding onto that memory, then the pain was gone. He avoided the surgery and he hasn't had any problems since. Now getting to the truth behind the problem is the only way to remove any suffering behind it. All conditions in your life, whether big or small, are simply mental conditions where you fail to see the truth. When you finally do come into the true cause of the problem, then the problem easily removes itself. So how do we come to the truth if we've become such experts at hiding it? Well, you have to go into the silence. You can visualize the conditions you want. You can argue with yourself to convince yourself of the truth, or you can ask and wait for inspiration. And all three are really good options. Now, the first option, visualization, should be pretty easy for you if you've been practicing your meditations. If you want to lose weight, for instance, you have to be able to see yourself in your mind's eye looking the way you want to be. If you want to be financially secure and love, surrounded by close friends or having adventures, you have to be able to see it first in vivid detail with focus. Remember, visualization is not daydreaming. You have to concentrate on exactly what you want. During visualization like this, questions and doubts will enter your mind. You have to push them out and believe that you truly deserve the image you've created. You push them out by discovering what's true. Many times people who are overweight decide that they'll never be at a healthy weight because it's too difficult or they don't deserve it. And seeing your vision of a different you, like say with collarbones, you might feel really ridiculous. Like this is silly. I'm never going to be able to see my collarbones ever again. But if you think about it, like what's the truth? The truth is you have collarbones and two, you have the ability to lose weight. Both are true statements. Now suddenly you know that the idea of being at a healthy weight isn't really ridiculous. It's actually possible. It's that simple. When thoughts of doubt come up, you must find the truth that will diminish those thoughts. Second, you can argue with yourself. Now this seems against everything I say about being happy and thinking positive, but one of the best ways to come to an answer is to think of all the possibilities. Like imagine you're a doctor and someone comes into your office with a headache. Your mind instantly starts racing through all the things that it could be. Is it a concussion? Is it a tumor? Is it dehydration? Is it an aneurysm? Are they migraines? You have to ask all these questions. And in asking questions and proving each one wrong, you find out what the truth really is. It's kind of like that board game Clue. Remember that game? 
Every time you enter a room, you have the opportunity to solve the mystery. With each guess, you learn something new that helps you whittle down your choices until you find out that it really was Miss Scarlet with the candlestick in the conservatory. Now, when I'm struggling with a problem, typically one that involves my emotions or relationships with other people, I find that the best way to get to the truth is to argue with myself on paper in my journal. I write in my journal the problem I'm facing and then I ask myself, what's true? What do I know is true? And when you come into the truth, you find that often your protective mechanisms turn on and they escalate the issues. When you find out what the truth actually is, you'll oftentimes find that the problem solves itself. Like for instance, I was dating a guy that I really liked. One night, I ran into him on the street. He was on a date with another girl. I was livid and I got so angry and I'm sure you can even imagine the things I wrote in my journal. <laughs> I, just, I was writing, I'm so angry, pretty much like that. But eventually, after pages and pages of this word vomit, I was like, you know what, what's true here? And I realized that we had never actually discussed being in an exclusive relationship. Once I convinced myself of the truth that he actually didn't do anything wrong, I was able to free myself of the anger. Now I had other things to work out, of course, and I had to continually convince myself of the truth to keep my anger at bay, but through knowing the truth, I was able to release myself of the negativity and to release him of the negativity. Sometimes you just have to ask yourself, what's true? Now the last option is to wait for inspiration. If you ask and sit in the silence, the solution to your problem will come to you. Now I find that this works best for me when I'm struggling with an idea that I can't seem to figure out, like, in writing these lectures, for instance. Sometimes I just need to go for a walk or sit down at the piano or really just sit quietly and suddenly I'll know exactly what I need to say. Now when you're silent, you're calming your conscious mind and you're calming your subconscious mind and you're allowing your spiritual self, your I, to come through. Remember that your spirit is connected to the entire universal mind, right? It's omniscient, it has access to all knowledge, it's so super intelligent. By sitting in the silence, your truth will come to you in the clearest way possible. Now, this method takes the most amount of practice because you have to learn to completely still your mind, but it is the most efficient way to come into your truth if you can master it. It's something you can work on your whole life. Now remember, no matter what your difficulty is, no matter where it is or you know, with who, it doesn't matter. You can only heal yourself. Trying to convince someone else of the truth is really not necessary. You only have to convince yourself. When you clear your own mind of any lack, limitation, disease, danger, or difficulty, anyone else who's associated with those feelings will also be free. And the best way to help others is to find your own truth in yourself. But the truth is only found in your inner world through your spiritual self. Remember that thoughts are creative. And everything in your life that is inharmonious is only an appearance. They're waves, they're vibrations. The things you hear, the things you see, they're only a perception of your reality. And when you learn the truth, you can see that you are ultimately responsible for every single condition in your life, including your feelings and your health. You can see that one decision or one thought process led you to the place where you are now. In the same way, you now know that your decisions today and your thought process today will change the course of your future. You are the final authority who makes the decisions and how your life will proceed from here on out. You can use this as a way to check yourself in the future. If you don't like the way you're feeling or the way your life is shaping up, realize that that's a clear sign, a neon light that you are not living your truth. Life is not a set list of rules to follow. All your actions and your influence on the world depend on your own truth, the moral code that you determine for yourself. This will manifest in your character and your entire world will reflect it. Everything you have now is a result of past causes. Your future is determined by what you do today. Now last week I told you that your life's purpose is not something that you'll figure out or will accomplish someday in the future. Your life's purpose is sharing your greatness right now. In the same way, Health and happiness are not two things you will accomplish in the future. They are two things that you have right now. You have the ability to increase your greatness, your health, and your happiness each and every day by listening to what's true for you. Don't do things because I told you to do them or because you read it in a magazine. Live your life based on what truly makes you great, happy, and healthy from this day forward. In this way, you don't fail. 
And as you move out of this course and back into a life that's not a weekly process of change, it's really easy to get a little depressed. And I feel this way every time I prepare for a concert. And once the concert's over, I just sit there in the green room thinking like, now what? I mean, I practiced and practiced and practiced for months and months and months. And then you play the song and it's over and you're just sitting there like, um, what do I do? I think the biggest lesson that you can learn is you need to realize that everything lives, eats, reproduces, and dies, and then you rinse and repeat. Now, this is the basic circle of life. In the process of this course, you've done the exact same thing. In the first six weeks, you learned what it is to live. In the second quarter, you learned to nourish your thoughts, to eat. In the third quarter, you learned to reproduce by giving birth to your purpose and expressing it to the world. And in this last quarter, you've learned that as you change, you leave the old behind and you start from a new place. Every day we go to sleep and we wake up to start a new day. Every challenge we face, we find the truth and are reborn new. Every step along the way, you learn something new, which brings you to a higher plane of existence. It's like being reborn. Now imagine who you were six months ago. What's changed? What's different? Who are you now? I know I was a completely different person six months ago. I mean, completely different. We've all gone through a transformation, a death of our old self and a rebirth of the new. And you will do this again and again and again over the course of your life. Your purpose will change, your goals will change, but the principles we've covered, they stay the same. If you find yourself stuck, as we're all apt to do, just repeat the course. I'm on my fourth time through it. And um, even though I wrote it, <laughs> I'm finding that I learn more and more about myself and my life's purpose each and every time I do it because I'm constantly changing and I get more each and every time. Now I encourage you to continue in your search for health and happiness by continuing to meditate in the way that works the best for you, eat in the way that fuels you the best, continue to ask yourself questions that help you find your truth and move in the way that makes you feel like your best self. Now, I'm not gonna give you any assignments this week because we're done. Now you start the process on your own. I'd love it if you all could send me a really quick email describing your experiences, letting me know how you've changed because I am so excited to find out. And then also look for me, um, look for a survey for me in the next week or so. I swear I'll send it out this time. Uh, please complete it. Even if you haven't finished all the lessons, even if there's still like you feel like you haven't done anything because I need to know how I can make this even better for people in the future. I'm really, really interested in your feedback. But more importantly, I feel like we're all taking a giant leap this week into a brand new life full of all sorts of possibilities. So that's all I've got for this week. And I wish for all of you that your new life is full of purpose, health, and happiness. And I want to thank you so much for sharing this journey with me. Short lesson today, that's all I've got. But if any of you are, who are online want to throw anything into the chat, uh, I'd be really happy to hear um, what's going on in your lives. Nothing this week. I do. I mean, I would love to hear um, some of the changes that you've made. Um, I'm I'm celebrating today, man. I am wearing my party shirt. Look, yay! It's a party. We made it to week 24. We made it through six months. And whether you finished all the process or whether you did anything, it doesn't matter. But I think um, it'd be really cool to share for those of you who are online today what kind of changes have come up. I mean, when you consider where you were in April. What kind of things have happened? I think being being true to yourself is such a big um, it's a big lesson this week. So it's you know it's pretty exciting to see. For me, um, I feel like my entire career has changed. <laughs> We've got one comment that see it says, "Let's see." I've ditched a jerk and embraced the new and changed my life all over the, that's all I got, all over the place, most likely. I mean, it's been fun to watch you guys too, to see what kind of things have happened. I love it. I think it's, um, it's quite a process, quite a process.
Oh, <laughs> she said all because of you. Well, thank you. That's awesome. But it wasn't really me. It's um, you made these decisions yourself, which is so awesome. I mean, that's the that's the whole point. I don't like I said, like, I don't want you guys to do anything because I told you to, but um, because you come into your own. And I think that's that's the struggle that we all have through our entire lives. And so this this week is, um, you know, this lesson about finding your truth. It's it's really important to know that um, that you really do. You have a you have a purpose. Michelle says I'm filled with purpose, which is fantastic. That's the best thing to be filled with. I think I'd rather be filled with that than, you know, nothing. I don't even know what you would be filled with if you weren't filled with purpose anymore. But it's very, very exciting. <laughs> Do we have anything else today? Anybody else want to chime in? Oh, she's like, I feel like I'm here for a reason. I think that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's really cool. I mean, that's the whole point. Like, why, why are we alive? What are we doing? What's the purpose? And I think, um, I think it's really amazing that you feel that way. Super cool. You make me cry. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> All right. Anybody else want to chime in? You guys being shy? <laughs> well, you are welcome. She says, thank you. You guys are so welcome. I am um, incredibly blessed to have all of you guys here listening. And, you know, there's nothing better than knowing that um, the crap that I spit out makes a difference for you guys. That's exactly what I was hoping it would do. And um, regardless, I know that for me, it, it's been a journey for me too. So, you know, we'll go from here. So keep an eye out for... Um, you know, the next steps, I'm going to try to publish this into book form. And um, so please buy it, a lot of them, send them to your friends, make them read it. And um, just start giving people purpose in their life, making people feel good. I think that's the, that's the point. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and log off for the last time. Ah! And I will see you guys hopefully sometime in the future, but not next Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>